Hello and welcome to Anatomy of Us, a show dedicated to bringing real help to real couples. I'm your host, Melanie Studley. What's up, guys? My name is Seth Studley. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and together we are high-performance marriage coaches. We are cutting through the bullcrap and creating a movement of happy, healthy, badass couples all over the world. Let's go! We are super stoked to have Emily Priscilla on the show today. She is a very successful entrepreneur. Her growth mindset is beyond belief and how she runs a family and all this stuff. We talked to her about this book called Relationships First. And although it is a business book, if you take these tenets that she talks about and overlay it to your family, massive things, mm -hmm. massive success will happen. So this is a super awesome conversation. She's chilled down to earth. I wasn't surprised. I was awesomely impressed by the whole interview. So you guys are going to love it. You guys, welcome to the show. Today we have Emily Frisella. Um, I've followed you for a long time, and you are the author of the newest book, Relationships First, People, Passion, and Profit. Emily, welcome to the show. I think this is going to be a fun Thank one you. already. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys uh, having me on. I'm excited to chat today. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this, I was reading through this book, and there's, there's tons of stuff that I want to talk about. And so I don't know if you know much about the show, but I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, right? So like families, therapy, that's my jam. And this is a relationship podcast, but we're also entrepreneurs, growth mindset people say, hey, get your stuff together, mm -hmm. people. Let's go, whether you're married or not kind mm -hmm. of thing, right? So I was, as I was reading this book, I know it's obviously very entrepreneurial minded, but I was reading it through a lens of a therapist thinking, holy shit, these nine things, if people did these things in their relationships, do you know how much that would like change, right. change the Improve game? Improve their relationships, yeah. Well, it's what you, you know, kind of like what you just said, like, hey, get your stuff together, whether you're married or not. But the thing is, is that if you want to attract the right spouse or partner in your life, you have to be the person that you want to attract. So that right there is the point of that message of like, get your, get your life together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, in life, your greatest asset, if you ask a lot of entrepreneurs or business, whatever, however you want to word it, business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever, what's your greatest asset at your business? What would they probably say? The building or our whatever it is. Right. They never say people. Your people is people is actually the biggest asset to a company because you could call your building that you own or you have a mortgage on or whatever mm -hmm. your asset, but without the people inside to fill it, you don't have a business mm -hmm. because right. you have like, you know, in the book, I talk about you have fax machines, you have your computers, you have your cell phones, you have all this stuff that's depreciating. You know, but the one thing that does appreciate in a business are your people because you can grow them, you can develop them, you can move them forward, you can provide a better life for them. They are then providing a better life for their family and those around them, and they become a better human because of what you choose to pour into them. And yeah, if we all just live by those principles, life in all areas could be a hell of a lot better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What there's one thing that we have three kids and we tell our kids and they're young, we tell them hey, relationships matter most, right? And this is before we read the book yeah. or, you know, any of this stuff. It was like, relationships matter most when, you know, somebody's mean to their sister, or they call their brother a name or something like that. It's like, hey, obviously we live together. You, We have to make this work. You have to be kind. You have to be loving. You have to be considerate. And of course, if we don't have relationships, then you could have the biggest house, the whatever, and it just doesn't matter. It mm -hmm. absolutely doesn't matter. And there's tons and tons of millionaires and billionaires who don't have good relationships and like, what am I even doing? Right. right. Um, yeah. Because, because they go towards one goal and they don't, there's not that. And I don't believe in balance because I, I, there, and when you own a business, there really isn't a pure balance. It's just mm -hmm. being cognizant of like where you're putting mm -hmm. your energy and how often you're doing that and so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, you see that a lot where people will just, they finally get to where they, they peak in their profession and they're mm -hmm. like, this is everything that I wanted. And they're like, but it's not because I'm alone. I treated people like crap to get here. I stepped on people. So that's why, you know, doing business with a relationship based mentality. And, you know, that's going to lead you to be an ethical business. That's going to reap you better, better relationships, better results, and, you know, a better future for you. And one that you can feel good about and feel really, you know, proud of 10, 20, 30 years down the road that where you're at is because you've built these great relationships and you're going to be able to maintain those as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would love to know where you learned a lot of these concepts. Like, is this something that you grew up in, like having this kind of language around you or where did it come from? Yeah. So my dad was an entrepreneur. Um, I briefly write about that. 
Um, he owned trucking companies and brokerage firms my entire life. My parents have been married 48 years this mm-hmm. month. Um, and that's just, it was just instilled in us. My mom was a stay at home mom, like super mom, PTA, all like, she was like the Pinterest mom before Pinterest was around. And then my dad, he, his office, um, was downtown St. Louis, which was an hour and 20 minutes from the farm that we had that where we, we all lived. So he would drive to work early in the morning. He'd get up, feed the cattle, drive to his office, run his company, and then drive home. My mom would have dinner on the table. We'd eat as a family, say our prayer, you know, Mm -hmm. and all that, like literally like people in our town teased us that we were like the Waltons. Like that is one thing I am so grateful for. It was like, it's myself and my, I have an older sister and a younger sister. And uh, we just had this like truly like picture perfect family life. It was just, it was just one. And I'm so grateful for it. Cause at that time I thought it was normal as I've grown up. I realized how, what a blessing that actually was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so mom would have dinner on the table. My dad would work or he'd eat dinner and then he'd go down to the farm and work and check the cows, count them and then come back home. And that was that. So, um, I learned a lot of it from watching them mm-hmm. on both sides of it. My mom being the support and the backbone of the household and running us girls to all of our sporting events and all that kind of stuff. And my dad going to work um, and, you know, just having this crazy, insane work ethic and then watching the balance and the dynamic between the two of them. And I love that. And I tell Andy, like, I feel like I just got blessed in both worlds. Cause like, I love to be, I love the homemaker side of things. You know, everybody wants to be this like boss bitch. And like, I don't, I love being a, like, like a old school, like housewife style. Like right. I, mm-hmm. the laundry, the clean, I cook dinner every night and all this. And then I learned that from my mom, but then I learned the business side from my dad, which I love to work. And it's like the, my, my biggest hobby is working. Mm-hmm. And I love that. And I got that from him. So it's, it all is from my parents I for love sure. That. Yeah. The w- one thing that you, you talk about in the book at the beginning of the book, you were in FFA, right? And I, yeah. I'm <laughs> from like you, a tiny town in South Carolina. We live out outside of Seattle now and been out here for a long time, but uh, the the stuff and we had a farm and horses and cows and all that jazz mm-hmm. you know and it's like holy cow the stuff that you learn on a farm in a field taking care of yeah. other things is just it is so life changing that a lot of people that maybe grew up on a farm just think oh well I'm taking this this is what you do right but for people yeah. who who don't who haven't learned those lessons it's like a lot harder for them to uh, I don't know understand and it's not like oh small town mentality kind of thing I'm better than you but it's like oh. Oh no, the work ethic that I grew up with and that you grew up with and Melanie, you didn't grow up on a farm, but you're small town stuff too. Mm -hmm. It's like that goes so amazingly far, Mm -hmm. like unbelievably far. And a lot of people don't have that. And one thing that you talked about, which I really love because it, it, it reminded me of like our growth mindset journey and like self helpless kick ass and do stuff right is you. And I wrote it down. It's like, uh, you were sitting there. I think you said you were in eighth grade and you were like, I can do this. I have this in me kind of thing, right? And I think you had to do a public speech or something like that. And it was just, it was really cool because I've experienced moments like that where you're like, oh man, I got to do something scary. What is this? I have some self-doubt. But then you reach down deep and go, no, I got this. And then you go and you, I mean, you might not crush it. Sometimes we do, right? But we're learning nonetheless, right? So just having that, like that piece really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's what you say about, you know, growing up on a farm, there's, two, two, two comments I have to that, which you just said, it's like growing up on a farm. That is something that I just always took for granted because I grew up in a farm town that was normal. And then whenever I moved to St. Louis, I saw that that wasn't normal. And one of the greatest gifts, not just like the work ethic and, you know, how the, the farming life as a whole, like what it actually entails. Cause most people think that meat comes from a grocery store, right? They don't see the actual, like what happens. But I think the one thing that I will always profess is the biggest thing that I learned is how to be resourceful because Mm. where I grew up at, we didn't even have a a store. You could buy a pair of socks at in town. You know, we went to grocery stores once a week and that was it and stocked our deep freeze up. We'd butcher a cow for the winter. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it wasn't so accessible, like in a big city. And so if you'd have like your combine breakdown or you'd have a flat tire or whatever, you had to be resourceful in solving problems on how to make it work because you couldn't take 45 minutes to drive to the farm and feed to get a part for this or anything else. So you really had to learn how to, you know, make things work with what you had. And I always tease, I feel like that's why farmers have usually a barn full of crap that people would think is a junkyard, but really it's, that's their parts store they need when they can't go to a parts yeah. store. Yeah, that's the so, warehouse. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I always, I love that gift of that lifestyle growing up. Um, and then as far as like, you know, mentioning 
getting ready to do something I was scared of. It's like, okay, I can do this. I still don't actually even know where that came from at that moment in time. It wasn't like I had been talking myself up Mm -hmm. or give myself like a pep talk. I just like had this blackout and I was like, I can just do it. I'll just do it. And I think that I felt that no matter, and again, I can't exactly articulate what I felt because I don't exactly remember, Mm -hmm. but I think it's one of those things where I thought the worst thing that could happen is I embarrass myself and people are going to get over it. They're not going to remember it where I felt like, why not just do it now? Because I was taught, you know, there's nothing so bad you can never find a way out of. And my parents taught us that for, you know, teens, when you're going through, Mm -hmm. you know, your, your angsty teen years and stuff and, you know, whatever, but that's something that they taught us through junior high. And I feel like that stuck with me is like, there's nothing so bad, no matter what happens, I can get out of it. It's going to be fine, no matter how bad I mess up. And that's been a mentality that's carried me through in that regard of like, I'm going to, I'm going to do anything I can. And Mm -hmm. if I fall down on my face, at least I know what I can't do and I can know what I need to do better the next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do do you think that that mentality or, or rather how did that mentality, um, make or set you up for taking risks, being an entrepreneur? I know you've had, you know, multiple businesses, you're very successful in a bunch of different platforms, but tell us a little bit, like tell Share with our listeners how that helped you and how that is available to them too. Maybe they didn't have the parents that we had or you had in that way. So how can they create that for themselves if they don't have it? Yeah. And it's, it's, I don't want to sound cliche or frou-frou or woo-woo, but it really is just everything you do in life is truly a lesson, whether it's a success or a failure. So what is that lesson? And if you didn't feel great about an interaction or what you did or a service you provided, think about, I always... I don't overthink it, but I do dissect what happened. And I want to break it down of like, okay, well, next time when they walk in the door, instead of offering them a bottle of water, I should have noticed that they already had one in their hand. Or so I'm just trying to use like right. crazy people. It's like, it's learn taking little snippets of it. And almost you start to do your own personal growth by breaking your own stuff down and saying, well, I read about this or I heard about this and I really want to be better at this. What in my interaction that I just had, could I embrace some of those other things that I know, those components to make this interaction better for the next time. And that's something that I've always done. And it was, I did not do it on purpose. It was completely by accident. Like I'd be lying if I said like, oh, I was so into like personal development. That wasn't a thing when I had my first business. I'm 40 years old. Like that was not a thing. You know, you just, there wasn't social media or anything. All social media was Facebook for college kids. You know what I mean? Yep. And so it was all done purely by accident. But now looking back, I'm like, thank God that I did that. Um, because through that, I gained more and more confidence knowing that I have messed up big time. Like one of my first public speaking events, it's still, it's like one of the biggest ones I've done. I was 17 and I was speaking in front of 60,000 people at an event what? and the stage. Yeah, it was it was a national convention for um something. So yeah. I, they were like the stage, the platforms, they weren't completely butted together and like seamless. And I had high heels on. Oh, no. I didn't pay attention because I'm thinking it's just a stage. And there was a little gap in between it. And my heel caught it during my speech in front of these people. And I like tripped. I didn't oh. fall, but I tripped and kind of fell out of my shoe. Mm-hmm. And I was so embarrassed. And I, re- I remember feeling that hot feeling. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I literally just, I didn't know what to say. I go, well, that shouldn't have happened. Like that's all I could think to say. <laughs> and then everybody just laughed and I kept going on. And when they laughed, I realized right then that's humanity. They're, they're now saying she's real. She's normal. She messes up too. Like, you mm-hmm. know, and that was almost a gift to me. And I, I always tease because when I still, I still do that. I have PTSD from that for sure. Cause anytime I go up on stage, the first few minutes, you'll always see me like, as I walk, I'll, I'll tell my story. And I kind of like, I'm like scanning the stage for like the open spots. And that actually happened. It didn't happen again, but I talked on, I spoke on a stage a few months ago and they had like a couple gaps. So I was like, okay, don't walk there. I'm making mental notes, but it's one of those things that I was like, thank God YouTube wasn't around. Cause I'd still be going viral with that thing. Cause it was oh a night, yeah. but it's one of the things where I realized I can, nothing is so terrible. People are going to laugh at you. Who cares? What are they doing with their life? Right. You know, you're laughing at me for fall, like tripping out of my shoe on stage. Are you up on stage talking? Mm-hmm. You know right. what I mean? Exactly. And that's, yeah. like, that's kind of how, how I look at things now. It's like, don't talk to me and don't try to correct me when you are doing something that it'd be like you speaking with someone, you know, with, for marriage counseling that has never even been married, but they're trying right. to tell you what to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Oh, we have listeners like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got people I'm sure, who've written sure, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know your take on just because of how many things that you've done, how successful you've been as a woman in the business space, what do you see women 
this is going to sound weird, but I don't know how else to say it. But like, what do you see women not doing, not trying? How are they not showing up for themselves in a way that I think, or that you see is stopping them from having success? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. They're not being themselves. Mm -hmm. They are the person that I can speak to woman to woman. They're strong. They're confident. They know what they want. They know what their offer is. They know all, all of that. But then when they get in front of like a business setting, they almost kind of like shrink themselves down mm -hmm. to where they want to make sure that what they're saying is acceptable, or they want to make sure that they don't sound stupid, or they're trying to be so over-professional boss babe, bad bitch mm -hmm. stuff that they end up looking arrogant and honestly stupid. Right. Mm -hmm. they, but we, they all, they know exactly what they're doing when they go into a, a board meeting or whatever it is, whatever important thing it is. But they just, they, they begin to start like almost kind of go on their shell mm -hmm. and because they speak. So I'm like, what are you doing? That's not you. One of my clients said that. And I was like, what are you doing? That's not who you are. She's like, I know, but this guy is like super powerful. And I don't want to say anything wrong because he has, the, he knows my boss and I didn't want to get in trouble and blah, blah. It's like, what you say could change the trajectory of that meeting and that business. Like yeah. one of my favorite scenes ever is in zero dark 30, whenever she she's in like this meeting with all the guys and they're like at the layout of like Ben Laden's house and the guy they're the, all the guys are talking and she's kind of just sitting at the end of the table and the, and the guy's like, well, who are you? And she says, she's like, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the person that found this motherfucker is what she says on. Yeah. And it's like, but she was just standing there and then they're like, oh, like she shut him up because she just wasn't going to say anything. And then she just lays it out there and all the guys, you can just see they're like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, th that would be the biggest thing I think is that they just don't stay true to who they are. Mm -hmm. And also they over communicate to the point of dissolving their idea or their point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That feels like, it's funny because that reminds me, it's going to sound unrelated for a hot second, but it's not. Uh, it reminds me of our school system with our kids right now. It's like the, the, for some oh, reason, yeah. they write the longest emails. It's like all you had to do was tell me where to be, when it was, what am yeah. I, what's my kid got to wear? Like, give me three points yeah. and we're good. But yeah. I agree like that over communicating to like disintegrate and tear things yeah. apart is so, so it, hard to watch. And it causes more confusion, mm -hmm. you know? And the thing is too, like with your school emails, that's another thing too. It's like, you want to give people the who, what, when, where, why, mm -hmm. period, the end. Because I know why people do that. They're positioning that to eliminate replies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like, what, we want to answer everything that we make it question on this. But then right. what happens is parents like, you're like, quit diluting this down. Just give me the, give me the point. And then what right. happens is they think they're hyper over communicating. But what's happening is they're like suffocating an audience because yeah. then they don't want to read it all and they don't show up. And they're, they're like, wait, why didn't you show up? It's like, well, you wrote us a 20 page email. I don't have time. For that. I had to read your novella before I figured out where it was at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They should send two emails like, okay, this is for parent, cool parents, right? right. Okay. Be here this time. Who gives a shit? Yeah. And then the other one's just like the whatever kind of parents, helicopter yeah. parents. You know? <laughs> so in, in, in that question, um, so this is, so as a, again, I'm going to like pull the, go the therapy route kind of thing. Why do people, this is kind of rhetorical, but we can have a quick conversation around it. So why do people not show up in their full selves, right? Because every, every single time that I've been able to show up in my full self, it, it always works better. I mean, at least if the people didn't respond how I thought they would or whatnot, at least I feel better of like, oh, well, it's, it's like, I did a good job. I gave my 110% and whatever I, they can think what they think kind of yeah. thing. But why, why are sometimes we reserved and not showing up that way? We care too much what people think, mm -hmm. you know, think about it as a child, you know, you were, you may have been called chubby. And then now for, you know, till you're 30 years old, you still think that you're some fat kid inside or something, even though you're not, because one person said something, we let one person, their comments hang with us for so long. So if this person's going out and they're not, they step into their full self and then someone says something that maybe is not like, flattery to them, then, then they start to like, well, maybe, maybe that was too much. Maybe I shouldn't do that again. And they don't ever step back into that. Mm -hmm. And then what happens, they step into part of themselves. And if someone else says something, okay, that they didn't like that either. And they end up basically just retracting themselves back into a shell, like a turtle, instead of standing up being like, this is who I am. And this is what I believe. And that's, I think a lot of the issues we have now in the world, people are too scared to stand up mm -hmm. who they actually are and their beliefs wholeheartedly, which I feel like would be very beneficial. Right? Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, it's always better when people show up and are real. You know, I can't think of a time of it. Like when you have shown up real, which you always do. Right. Or like conversations with friends or new friends or whatnot. 
and they're bringing who they are, I'm like, dude, that was awesome. Let's be friends. I want more of that, right? Yeah. It's inspiring. It's like life-giving because nobody's like yeah. bullshitting around or scared of this or scared of that. And it's like, I don't have time well, for that. And you can actually have good, deep conversations and meaningful conversations because there's nothing that like mind numbs me more than the, oh, the weather's nice today. Oh, what do you got going on the rest? It's just like, I don't even want, I would rather not have a conversation right. Then have to deal with, with that. I want to know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I love when people ask me an, an, an intriguing or interesting question, like it immediately before I have an answer, I'm like, okay, like I'm, I like that person because mm -hmm. I can tell that they're not just surface level and that they actually not even just care about me, but they actually have the mental capacity mm -hmm. other than just the shallow small talk. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. They want to know who you actually are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Well, okay. That leads me to, so, okay. I, I want to not get too much of a side. I want to talk about the book, but we started our entire podcast because we've been married 18 years and we had a super shitty marriage. Melanie gave me a black eye. There was all kinds of, we were just like backwards on so many stuff and every resource, every book that was out there on marriage, of course it didn't talk about, Hey, I just punched my husband in the face and we both want to kill each other. And this is crazy. What's going on? There were no resources, podcasts, anything out there. It was just like, oh, love your husband, love yeah. your wife, be cool with everything. Love I'm like, languages. this is so, well, love language is fine, but right. this, this is so stupid. There was nothing out there. So we created this entire thing that we're doing because there were no resources out there. So we're like, well, let's make the resources. Let's yes. share our story. Let's be real as possible. So going into the book, obviously the, the name of the book is Relationships First, Clearly relationships matter to you. Can you talk a little bit about why? And not just like, oh, why did you write the book, Emily? But like the real reason, hey, relationships are so important. I have to share this, my mm -hmm. experience, my success, my trials, my failures around this so other people can begin to put relationships first. Why Why did you do this? Okay, well, I think the most simplistic um, way to explain that is whenever you have something good happen in your life, bad happen, tragic, you want to celebrate, you want to sob. What do you do? You call on your friends, your family. Mm -hmm. You don't go to your office and hug the building. You don't go <laughs> sit in your car and hug the steering wheel. Right. You know what I mean? It's these relationships that you build with the people is what gets you through life from infancy until you're in the cold earth, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's always been so important to me because I realized that I saw my dad do this with his, he had hundreds of employees. And I saw that he knew the kids' names. Mm -hmm. He knew about these people. He knew, you know what I mean? They celebrated birthdays. He cared. And I saw that. And I saw the, the, how they would rally around him instead of like someone else, another like executive or, you know, that worked within the company or something, because it wasn't because he was their boss. It's because they could tell that he actually cared about them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's something that, you know, I saw with, my first job of a waitress, you know, I just, I didn't do it all intentionally again, because I was 14 years old. That wasn't, I wasn't that mentally developed yet to actually put that together. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I would, you know, I just, I loved meeting people and talking to them and learning about them. And we built these great relationships, you know, and then when I opened my flower shop years later, they all came and they were all customers because I took the time to build that. And it was at that moment, I realized how powerful what I had done six years earlier had been because those people immediately made my business a hit because with their word of mouth or coming in or spreading the news. Cause again, this is before social media. Mm -hmm. And so the, it, it was at that moment, I was like, I don't know how I just did that, but I want to do it again. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I've been, you know, keep going, doing over and over again, because, you know, I'm, you know, and you, you getting into, you know, like what you guys are doing now, your project, you sound like me where it's like, you're a mission driven entrepreneur. It's like everything I've done is because it's been a mission of a void of something. And it's always been to serve people. And so I've always had this like, um, attraction to go towards whatever I can do to like help people. And in a weird way, maybe it's not weird. It's almost a selfish thing too, because it's like, oh, this person lost weight because they used my cookbook. Or, you know, it's like one of those mm -hmm. things where like, their team got stronger because they implemented these their strategies or like, or you know, like with my coaching clients, it's like, oh, they surpassed their goal already because of this. So it's like, it's one of those things where like I love helping people and building those relationships because in a way I get that back so much and like just the feeling of like how good that feels. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, it's we, like like their success is truly like my success. Yeah. I feel like. 
It is. We were talking in the in the kitchen literally earlier, like talking about, hey, would you do this if I didn't do it? And kind of, you know, back and forth. And the answer was, yes, it would look different, but we would still mm -hmm. do it. Like we get emails all the time or like messages and stuff. It's like, hey, that podcast or like you're working with you saved mm -hmm. our marriage. I'm like, hell yeah, yeah. yeah, that feels awesome. First of all, I'm happy for you. You're not mm -hmm. divorced. You still are married, right? Yeah. That's great. Thumbs up to that. <laughs> but then also like, oh, wait a minute. I had a part in that? Yeah. <sighs> That yeah. feels like a zillion bucks. Mm -hmm. That's rad. Yeah. And, what, and yeah. I something that I really love is that you said when you were 14 and you were waitressing, you're like, I didn't know. I wasn't really like thinking that I was doing whatever. But what's really cool from a family systems perspective is you go to, we go to what we know, right? Mm -hmm. If you're raised yeah. in a home where your family has structure and systems, like you're saying every night mom is cooking dinner and dad is going to work. Like there's a structure, there's a balance, there's whatever. Like it's awesome because you, more is caught than taught. You absorbed the watching your dad be such a good boss, you absorbed that. Yeah. And then you took yeah. that into your life, not knowing it, which is which great. I, and it and works both ways though. Cause we can, you know, parents can accidentally teach their children to be terrible at these kinds of things. Oh yeah. And so right. what I love is like, you're, you're sort of hitting on so many things that I think are interconnected. And, um, and also this is going to sound a little bit weird for a second too. I love this concept lately. I've been thinking about what I call the divine order of love. I have no, it just like popped into my head one day. I was thinking about it. And that idea of like, when I help, you know, my client, they surpass their business goals or they, whatever, or the, you know, these things happen because I worked with them. You get a, a boost of like reward from that as well as they do. And that to me feels like what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Is that like yeah. not what all of life is about, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, then, and that's what I love. Yeah. And yeah. then like emails or texts or calls, they tell me like, oh, because of you. And I always tell them, and this is God's honest truth. It is not because of me. They did the work. All I did was say, here's what I would do if I were you. Mm -hmm. And they took that and ran and executed and were successful with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is what also makes me super excited because I won't work with people that won't do that. Yeah. So to know that like, they can, they're putting this plan in place. And then I feel like there's, it's deeper than just that one, like this worked. It's because then they can trust, they learn to trust themselves yes. and they learn to, that they, they can do this. And all I have to do is just keep being consistent with this. And I'm going to be consistent with my results and that then they can take that. Then it builds their confidence. Mm -hmm. They feel better. They're making more money or whatever that may help alleviate some stress at home. They are in a better mood. They're providing better for their family in all fronts. They're showing up better for them. And then it makes that side better mm -hmm. as well. So it's like this massive like hamster mm -hmm. wheel of like cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And I just love seeing that come to come to life. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes me think you must be because I know you have your um, planner. You do planners. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I am obsessed with systems and I make yeah. planners for myself. I'm ADD. I've got a million things going on, a million kids. I only have three, but it feels like a million. Uh, <laughs> but I, it does. I would love to know what you love about systems and why you make planners, why you like clearly all of your work points to without pointing to like systems. Like there's a system for success, whether it's cookbooks or planners. Like tell me, let me peek inside of your brain around what that looks like and why it why you do what you do from a systems perspective. I would love to know. Well. It may be, it's going to be a very boring answer. I'll probably disappoint you, but it's because it gives me calm and peace of mind, knowing that I can, that I'm not biting off more than I can chew. When I have a systems and a strategy in place, I know I can get all of my stuff done for my companies. And then I manage my husband's brand and our uh, entrepreneurial group, the RT syndicate. I, to be able to manage all of those and manage all of my teams that work in independently in the different companies that I have to have that. Otherwise I feel like I'm just a stress ball. And when I get stressed, I just kind of like get very quiet. Like I'm the person that when you're stressed, you don't eat. So I like lose weight when I'm stressed. Oh, no. I'm like, I take a lot of deep breaths. I'm, I feel anxious. Mm -hmm. So for me, honestly, like systems and organization, it's really just for me to have peace of mind and not feel overwhelmed. It's a way for me to combat that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What systems so, do you use in your home? Oh my gosh. <laughs> So, um, I have, I have like systems for everything. Like when the plants get watered, what fertilizer they get and when, like it's all done out, but keep talking. I'm here for that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm you, you guys like are going to be obsessed. Best yeah. Keep on, yeah. keep on. So it's really, so with the systems, it's really just, um, within the home, it's, I have a system for paying our bills. I have a system for the way the dogs are 
fed, manage their supplementation, all that kind of stuff. Like literally it's down to like the plants watering. And I'd be lying. I have a lot of stuff going on. We have an amazing house manager. She works here three days a week that she helps a lot with like cleaning and errands and things like that. She's a absolute godsend. I hired her, I think about two and a half years ago. And she's, we've known her for, I think 16 years. She's awesome. fabulous. So um, I can, I'm not doing it by myself. Right. So do not think that. I don't right. want people to hear this and think like, wow, she doesn't know how this happened. And it seems like some unattainable thing. I have help. I would have mm-hmm. to have help or I would be a very crabby person probably. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the system, I create like microsystems within mm-hmm. it. So it's, yeah, I just like to stay organized. I like to, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I love I'm that. OCD. No, yeah. I love it. And it's funny because again, I, so on this journey of what we do and running a business together and all of that, I've taken um, business concepts and overlaid them into my home and into marriage. Oh, totally. And I'm like, mm-hmm. why aren't we, do- why aren't more people doing that? Why don't we all run our homes like a business and our marriages like yeah. a business like this? There are clear systems that have success no matter what you do. If you show up for the system, you will be successful. And I, well, so yeah. I just love, I love that you even said like, I have micro systems. And so I'm, I'm sort of ex- pointing back to this conversation intentionally knowing who our audience is and saying, Hey, moms, ladies who are at ho- running homes, like you can implement systems that guarantee you will not get overwhelmed. Like you can yeah. create a system that guards you from overwhelm and guards yeah. you from getting, you know, so stressed out that you don't eat. Uh, and yeah. so I don't know, it's just something that I know a few years ago, I would have been like, who needs a planner? That's dumb. And now I'm like, everyone needs a planner. How can we get everyone planners? You know? Yeah. And that's true though, with like the moms, that's what I hear a lot. Cause they're running their kids everywhere and mm-hmm. stuff. And a lot of them, the overwhelm comes from running on the fly and not necessarily having a system. So yeah. I always tell people like that. It's like, Hey, take 20 minutes on Sunday or whatever day, mm-hmm. the day before you go grocery mm-hmm. shopping, write out all your meals for the week of what you're going to create for your family. That will fit your budget. That will make it easier for you because you're going to know your kid's sports schedule at night and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Like if you have a structure and it doesn't take long, literally 30 minutes, just yeah. once a week to write all this down on a I don't care if it's my planner. I don't care if you go to the dollar store and get a planner, you write on a piece of, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Just write it down because then you actually be able, you're, you're, you feel better mm-hmm. checking something off, seeing a visual of it. And when you have it on paper, you are not as overwhelmed because uh, most of the overwhelm happens in our head because we're trying, we're yep. stressing ourselves out because we're overthinking of, I don't want to forget this. Don't forget this. Don't forget mm-hmm. this you take the time to write it down, you're not going to forget it. Therefore you're immediately already dumping stress out Mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. And that's not just for business leaders. It's for everybody running a home. Even if it's just you, your husband, you know, we don't have kids. Mm -hmm. It's like, even if it's just you two, it's important, you know, and with the business um, relation you talked about, as far as like running a business and running Mm -hmm. a home, it's the Mm -hmm. same. And it's the same thing for us. It's like, we have our weekly meetings and business. We'll have a meeting at the home that week. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? All about those kind of structures that you create. And then also we get asked a lot. I'm just going to answer this, even though you didn't even ask, yeah. but about like, you know, like working together with your spouse, I get yeah. asked a lot, you know, cause we run our companies together mm-hmm. and we have a thing that we've implemented. I've, um, worked in in these brand work manages brand and all that jazz for the last six years. And one of the things is we do not talk about work at home. Now that is way easier said than done, mm-hmm. but it, it is absolutely wonderful because we have a fantastic working relationship mm-hmm. and a fantastic home relationship. Because at work, we're Andy and Emily, mm-hmm. like coworkers, and at home, we're Andy and Emily, husband and wife, mm-hmm. you know, because then it doesn't intermingle the two because other, otherwise what's going to happen if you intermingle those, pretty soon you're just basically coworkers that are roommates right. then, mm-hmm. you right. know? Yeah. So it's really important to have that, that divide. And we only talk about work during what we call work hours. So if I'm working Love from it. home, mm-hmm. I, we only text or call about work during the time that he is gone at work. Mm-hmm. And then when he's home, it's over. You know, unless God forbid there's some urgent, like, oh, this person canceled at nine, eight, whatever. Then I tell them that stuff. But other than that, we just, we like to keep it separate. And I think that if people do that, you will have so much more happiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. We, I'm not making this up. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. Like we, we started full-time less than a a year and a half ago. So basically this is still a startup, right? So we're having to like work all the time, talk. We have three kids, our studio is at home, our office is at home. Everything's here. Right. So and and that's kind of been a thing. I'm like talking about work again. Oh my gosh. I just want to like 
eat a hot dog and talk about something fun. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't even eat the hot hard dog. thing is I don't. I love work. You love I work. Love so love yeah. work. So it's it's really challenging. So, we would get along so good. I know. Yeah. I'm here for it. I'm here for it all day long. <laughs> so so that's that's not a bad thing. I'm not. I'm. I don't want to be like the 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 whiny baby who's like Melody. We never do anything. Stop right. working. We're like, uh, hello. We're building a business. This is what it yeah. takes. So I understand that. But at the expense of the marriage, mm-hmm. that's something that I'm not willing to mm-hmm. give up. You know, because yeah. for our kids and our own our own marriage and all that jazz. So what are your, and I'm just going to ask a super practical question. What are the like working hours Mm -hmm. that you guys have? Like, okay, you know, after 6 PM, is it 7 30 PM zero work? Don't even think about it. Don't talk about it. What, what are the hours for you? It's basically, so our days are very, um, different. We don't have like an eight to five. Like a lot of people will leave for work at seven 30 and they get home at six Mm o'clock. Ours will be anywhere from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or maybe it starts at 11 and then it ends at four. Like it's very all over the place depending on the day, but it's basically whenever we are apart, that's when we can talk about it during the day. Mm -hmm. And then when we're back home, that's whenever we stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like on Wednesday nights, we have a call with our entrepreneur group that starts at five. Andy does it at HQ. I do it here. And then that lasts for an hour, then he gets home and then it's over. You know what I mean? But that's a, like, a little bit of a longer day. So whenever we were apart and I know he's not doing like an event or you know, anything like that, if he's just at work, then we talk about it. So whatever the hours of window work is, mm-hmm. that's when we discuss it. Mm-hmm. And it's that. just, you know, and what you, you know, what you had said about, you know, you work together and, you know, everything is there and you want, don't want to talk about work anymore. You want to eat a hot dog and stuff. And I think that's an important thing too. Cause like having that differentiating like timeline of like, we're not doing this anymore because the thing is, is it's also like, I get tired of people like hearing people nag to their wife or yeah. their husband about like, well, you're always working. You're mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's also, you have to respect that they're working towards a life to could, that also benefits you as well. Exactly. But, that, but with that, you're together as a partner that you're supposed to be benefiting each other as well. So it's not just the work side of it. It's like, you have to take that work mentality because, you know, you don't want to go to work and give everybody in your office the best of you. And then you get home to your spouse and they get the what's left of you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And so it's really important to be able to have that. I feel, you know, that, that what we would call a balance, if there is such a thing. Right. And I feel just our little rule of that work life. Mm -hmm. balance has really, it really helps that. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that you're sharing that because a lot of people will hear this and go, Oh, Emily's super successful. This is how she finds success. Like in the, on the home life side, because a lot of people don't know how to do that. They, Mm -hmm. they have questions about that. So hearing from you being super successful and making it work and having systems around that, that that's going to benefit, uh, you know, tons of people that you won't even know about that we won't even know about. Right. (laughs) And then I want to go back. So I was actually in St. Louis at First Form last week and got to hear Sal talk and stuff like that. And I know everybody and their mother who has been to First Form says this like, oh my gosh, that was just like next level kind of thing. I know you had a huge part to doing that. But it's one of those things where like the cleanliness and the order and the culture of that, which you talk about here. Um, what is it? I think chapter, yeah, chapter seven the whole culture about it, that benefits you and all like your employees. And that that's like important to you, right? And then because it also is important to you, it makes it super important and is inspiring to other people. So it's one of those kind of things like, oh, we're doing this. We, we benefit it. We benefit from it. We benefit from hearing other people benefit from it. So it's like that big circle, like you were yeah. talking about. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to yeah. say that it like, it, it took cleanliness to a whole different level. And <laughs> Melanie, you might be thinking, what the hell is he talking about? I haven't seen this yet. But Well, yeah, I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm talking about like me doing clean, yeah. cleanly and stuff. It's no, like, I also wish I could see that. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. But it's, it's, like, it's like upping the game. It's that, that inspiration. So just you even sharing like the quitting time and like, this mm-hmm. is what we do when we're together. I mean, yeah. when we're apart, all, all business, yeah. when we're together. And I want to say I. too, the fact that you shared that you said we have a house manager or whatever language you use for it. I recently, we recently had, um, a lady would come twice a week. She was actually like, uh, dating a cousin of ours or whatever. And it was amazing. And I tell people, I'm like this, anyone that you see who's successful and doing it has help. Like, and you can yeah. pay for help. It's not weird. Right. It's and not. I don't that. like when people hide that though. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's. You're making what you're doing unrealistic to others then if you don't absolutely. say that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah right. it, it just burns me. I'm like, just tell you have help. And you know what? You're going to have a better life when you have that help, because mm-hmm. guess what? On the weekends, I'm not cleaning the house. 
Yeah. We can go to our farm and shoot guns and hang out or whatever mm-hmm. else because of this. So, you know, you, it's, it's truly, it's an investment into mm-hmm. your well being. Mm-hmm. Truly. It is. Yeah. And I had a huge block around it, I think, because I grew up really humble. Like, like you just work hard. I, I mean, it's like, oh, it's like okay. farmer vibes. We just didn't have a, t- we had a horse and sheep and stuff, but it wasn't quite a farm. Um, and I remember having a really weird mental block around, like even something as small this is going to sound unrelated, but it's not like getting my nails done. I was like, this yeah. is weird. Like you shouldn't, you can't pay for this. You just do it yourself. Like that's whatever. Yeah. And someone was with me and they were like, you're supporting a small business. Will you stop saying that ah. you shouldn't do this? Do you want a client to support your small business? Then you should stop saying that you should paint your nails by yourself. And mm-hmm. like, and hiring someone to work for you, you're supporting a person. So I just yeah. want to like really drive this point home. Cause so many women now, again, I'm sorry. I'm like taking over the conversation and making about like my audience and like who I think needs help and whatever, but it's like, Support you're supporting someone, but you're yeah. also supporting yourself and your family and all that you're, you know, the dreams that you want to build, whether that's starting a business or just running your home. Like you yeah. can do these things. You can hire out this work. Uh, I don't know. I have loads of thoughts about it, but I'm no. just really glad that you mentioned that because so many people no, do I'm, hide these things, you know? No, and I'm the same way you are. I was very uncomfortable with it because where I got my mom, our house was immaculate. You could eat off a toilet seat any time of day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and she did it all herself. So for me, I always thought that was like a frivolous expense right. or, you know, that's only what certain like snobby mm-hmm. people did or whatever mm-hmm. it was. And so I had a very, like, I was very uncomfortable with that right. for a while. And yeah. then years ago, we, um, in our first house, when Andy and I first got together, we hired a cleaning company to come in once a month to do deep cleans. And I felt weird about that. And then we moved from that house into a larger house and then businesses, you know, things started taking off yeah. and I felt so stressed. I'm like, I cannot keep up with everything, even with just us, but like we have two dogs, like, mm-hmm. and I, I like, you know, I didn't want freaking dog hair everywhere. Right, like that. Right. So we hired a lady once every two weeks and then I got used to that. And then now it's just, there's just too much stuff going on in our world mm-hmm. and everything. And so, um, yeah, we hired our house manager. We moved in yeah. uh, here and it's just been a godsend because you can't, I, I used to, I did feel guilty about that. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, like this is embarrassing. Like people are going to think I should be able to do this myself. And right. I was always self-righteous in that of like, I can do everything. I'm going to be yep. superwoman. And then what happened was, is I would get completely burnt out. I would never have a life because all I was doing was just with, I wasn't working. Mm-hmm. I was trying, I was working on the house. And yes. then it's like, I felt like I was not even living a life. I was just mm-hmm. kind of existing. And I was just, you know, like almost like I was just, at everybody's beck and call because mm-hmm. you guys know as an entrepreneur, you're not really the boss. Everybody else is kind of the boss of you and you got to mm-hmm. like kind of do a lot of their right. stuff. So I felt just like, I didn't even, I was just, I don't want to say like, oh, I was unhappy, but I just felt like I was like, is this really it? Like, right. is this what this is? Yeah. And then when I started getting help and not being shy about it, mm-hmm. then I was, then I would, things were really able to take off. So it's like when people are struggling in business, I'm like, get hire out some of that help and you'll see things really grow because not only just because you're not spending the time doing it, but you have so much more energy Mm -hmm. to do it, you know, to do what you need to do and pour into your business or whatever project that you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, two quick things. One, I was recently at a conference for women in business. And one of the things that, uh, lady said is she is teaching her oldest kid to become their house manager. She's like, you're going to figure out that. what I know. I was like, that's brilliant. So I'm 100% stealing that from her. The second thing I have to know is what kind of dogs do you have? I love dogs. English, we have two English bulldogs. <gasps> How fun. Yeah. We have, we raise Australian shepherds. And I oh, love, I had those growing up. Our cattle dogs. Yeah. They're so we have cute. Blue healers, red healers, mm-hmm. and Australian shepherds. I love it. Awesome. Well, yeah. so I want to be respectful of your time. Thank you so much. I know that we talked about, oh gosh, it flew by. <laughs> I know. Like we talked about minutes. a lot of stuff and I feel like not, we didn't, we didn't hit the book, but we have five books here and whoever, uh, you know, screenshots or takes a picture, does an iTunes review, uh, we'll send you a book. You guys go take it. And if you're not an entrepreneur and you listen to this, I want you to take each of these mm-hmm. uh, nine tenants and apply them to your marriage. Like mm-hmm. we talked about systems. We talked about all kinds of stuff. And one that we didn't even talk about was like personal accountability Hello, that's like one of the, geez, I'm just thinking like Jocko Willink, extreme ownership kind yeah. of vibes, you know, it's like, it has to start with personal accountability. Nobody's going to do it for you. If you want it done, do it yourself, take responsibility. And then also the power of delegation too. It's like when we, uh-huh. when we hire out people, good people, then that can help us live and step into more of our zone of genius and yes. oh, guess what? Then we can. I love help. to use that phrase. I love Gay Hendricks books. Oh, yeah. oh he, he, we've had him on the show twice. Yeah, he's, he's been on the show. So he's he's super, super great. But yeah. yeah, yeah, that's like 
let's empower more people to live in their zone of genius. Mm -hmm. If you're not an entrepreneur, you still have a zone of genius Mm -hmm. in your marriage. What are you Mm -hmm. best at? You know, and if you're doing all this other crap that's getting in the way of that, eliminate that. Talk to your spouse about it. Make a way for you to be more in your zone of genius. Mm -hmm. But um, where can people find more of your stuff if you want them to find more of your stuff? Which I'm sure (laughs) you know. Easiest way is just Instagram. It's at Emily Frisella. Everything's there. Link in bio stuff. You can find anything there. So yeah, keep right on. Would well, you, hold on. Were you going to wrap up? I want to, I, okay. Selfishly, I want you to tell us like all the things that you do. Like you have cookbooks, you do planners. Like well, you selfishly <laughs> just like tell me all the things. So I know them all. Okay. Yeah. I have uh, two cookbooks, the Saints Plate Sinners Dinner. And then I have the Fresh Farmhouse Kitchen and then the Relationships First book. I am the founder of Women Business Workshop. I have the paper and plan company. I'm the founder of Fit Home and Health. Um, I do, I have my book club, Freedom Reads. I am the COO of 44-7 Media, which is Andy's personal brand. Um, Also over our Otis and Charlie, because we have uh, children's books that Mm -hmm. feature our dogs um, over that. And then I'm the COO of the Arate Syndicate. And there's something else I'm forgetting. I can't remember. Paper and plan company. I don't know. I'm forgetting something. Doesn't matter. Whatever. Jeez. Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> only a few things. If Jeez, anybody, if anybody, if anybody could, could do one of those things, that would be amazing. So that's, that's legit. That's hey, awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Some days I do one better than any of them, and it's like I can't be everywhere in every place. So that's why teams and systems are important. Yeah. For sure. yeah. yeah. I love that. Thank you. I honestly was like, you do so much. The more that I look into your stuff, I'm like, she's got like five things. What? She has more. So I'm. I'm just. Thankful. I think I'm just really actually crazy or something. <laughs> It's perfect. Well, Keep doing no, that. Thing about you though, it's like you're, you know, like you guys are like mission-based mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, and that's why I have so much stuff. Is because it's not like I just like I want to start this and this. It's mm-hmm. like when you see a hole and a void, you want to fill yeah. it, and you see there's a need. So then it's like I can't help but not jump mm-hmm. into it. Like you guys doing, yeah. you know, with this the podcast helping other people. So it's like you saw a need for it, so you jumped in. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Do yeah. you did you mention coaching? You do coaching? Did you say that you? Yeah, did I do that. Yeah, that okay. too. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's like we would be remiss and kind of wrong if we didn't do these things, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's yeah. just in us. It's like, okay, it has to come out e- either, either way. Um, so yeah. la- last question. Thank you so much, by the oh, way. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is bringing you jazz right now? I don't care if it's like business stuff. Or That's like, going to be the second I, to the last question. Cause I have another one last, last question after his okay. last question. Okay. So okay. You're good. I mean, it can be anything what? like a new dog food for Otis and Charlie or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, I, I make their dog food. So they, they eat a very good diet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, as far as what's really like lighting up, it's honestly, um, grow, we're getting ready to grow paper and plan company a lot. Um, I've been looking for a building, um, for the last like year to move into, to grow and develop that because we have a lot of new, um, exciting projects coming up on that. So I'm really like fully like all into that and super excited for that to grow. So that would awesome. be, what's definitely like that's on my, so the highest point of my radar right now. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. really, really cool. Looking forward um, to that. That'd be cool. The question that I wanted to ask is what, like, what are maybe top three books that you think everyone should read uh, ever? Okay. And like books that you adore. Okay. One, I mean, I think everybody's read this by now is Atomic Habits. That's mm-hmm. a great book. Mm -hmm. Um, that one's great. I mentioned the big leap that's Mm -hmm. huge by Gay Hendricks. I love that one. And then I also think, um, the attributes by Rich Devaney is a great book. Um, I want to say four, Mm -hmm. I'm breaking the rules, but the attributes are really great because he was a Navy SEAL. Um, and basically what the book is about is it talks about what basically what an attribute versus a skill Mm -hmm. and how to create those to where like what you, what, what's the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And it really helps you identify and understand people when you can see their attributes Mm -hmm. of what they actually have. So it helps in not only just personal life, but also in business. Um, And then the last one, which will be for leaders in a business or entrepreneurs is called Leader Shift, S-H-I-F-T by John Maxwell. It is phenomenal. It is, I've read that book. I'm not probably eight or nine times. I absolutely love it. It's a great book. Um, That's, those are my top four. That's so exciting because two of them I haven't even heard of. Yeah, me too. I will be purchasing those in like four minutes. So yeah, that's awesome. awesome. (laughs) Thank you so much for sharing your books and all the things. And I can't wait to like dive in more into all that you do. And when you get that building for paper, was it paper? and Paper plan co. When you get that planner company, I'm fine with that. (laughs) I want to visit it. When you get it yeah. and just look I at it. I want to visit. I've been visiting my head on my vision board for like the last year and a half. Love it. Yes. Love vision it. boards. We have those right yes, there. Yes, we got so them everywhere. That's that's yeah. awesome. So you <laughs> guys, relationship first, people, passion, and profit. Emily, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I was super stoked that you would even talk to us yeah. about this. So. 
Thank you. I think no, your book I'm is excited. awesome. Thanks for having yeah. me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank so, you. all right. We'll catch you soon. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Giveaway. Giveaway time. So, guys, we have five, five, five. Of, of Emily's books, right? If you liked her, if you liked what she had to say, grab one of these books. You can grab one. You can pay for it. But since I got my hands on five of them, I will send you one. We actually love this book so much. We love Emily so much that we got five copies to give away to the first five people to share the show in their stories and tag Emily Frisella and Anatomy of Marriage. Mm -hmm. You tag us. I will see the tag. The first five people get a book and I will DM you after that for you to have this book and improve your life drastically. It so, will be amazing. Yep. It'll be super fun. So guys, thank you. Remember to tag us, tag Emily. Get a free book, share the show, improve your life. Love you guys. You're going to love it. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to Anatomy of Us. This podcast is produced by my mom, Melanie Studley, and hosted by my dad, Seth Studley. Our show is edited and published by our producer, Reva Hansen, from Creative Media Support. Special thanks to our Patreon members that get an extra episode every week. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye. Bye.